Peace, peace, world. She got DJ Cliff. Welcome to another episode of the Cliff Notes Podcast. Thank you so much for downloading it or streaming it. However you check out your podcast, man. Super psyched for this one. Had a chance to sit and chop it up with my guy, Portland resident MC, Jay Jury. Talked about his start in the music industry, fronting a hip-hop band, all kinds of stuff, man. Also talked about why it took me so long to figure out where the IE is, but... Really, really dope conversation with a really good dude, amazing artist. Yo, check out this latest episode, the Cliff Notes Podcast, featuring Jay Jury. Support for the Cliff Notes Podcast comes from Acapella Apparel, an idea born from a love of hip-hop, funk, and soul music and its surrounding cultures. With fashion being a huge visual part of the cultures, they've created expressive images to pay homage, invoke nostalgia, and showcase the elements that make up the lifestyle and cultures of these genres. Acapella, apparel for the music lifestyle. For more information, check out acapella.com. That's A-K-E-P-E-L-E dot com. Invite people to come through. And um, I, I know I, I sound I sound repetitive when I say it, but it's it's actually true, man. It's it's this one is has been a long time coming, and I'm really I'm really looking forward to to getting into it. Um, I gotta I gotta get the rewind on on where we first connected because I think I know, but I'm not quite so sure. I'm not sure, so you're gonna have to uh, you you have to let me know if I if I got it correct. But yo, before we get into that too far, man, let them know who you are. Yeah, yo, this is Jay Jury, man, hailing from the Inland Empire, i.e. 909. What's up, B? How you been? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me, brother. Look, bro. Thank you for coming through, man. Um, all right. So I I think that I remember first first connecting with you um, at Mike Check. So am I? Is that sound familiar? Yeah, absolutely. That okay. was man. I feel like forever ago. It was uh, a minute ago. Yeah, it was a, it was a minute ago. But it <laughs> yeah. was definitely Mike Check. Uh, my man, Senior Chaos, was was performing at that. I can't remember who was headlining. I don't. I don't think it was him that night. No, nah, Chaos. When I had to, I had to go. I back forgot to who it was, but yeah. But I definitely pulled up. Uh, he he threw me the invite, and uh, so I just started connecting the dots, man. It's yeah. it's so funny. It's so funny you bring up chaos because the, the my like sometimes I I be feeling I be feeling bad, bro, because I have an opportunity to to meet so many so many artists, and um, grateful for the platforms that I have to provide for people. But then I'd be like, dang, I was I was so so slipping. Yeah. And I feel that way about chaos, and I feel that way about you. So with chaos, it's funny, and I hit him up. Cause like I'm, I'm always playing stuff. I'm always mm-hmm. looking for, you know, looking for new music for the for the radio show. I was playing joints, didn't make the connection that that was chaos. Met him, saw him, uh, saw him rock. Was like, okay. Yep. And then it wasn't until he left to go back to ATL that I was like, oh, not only do I know who you are, like I've been playing your stuff for a minute. That's crazy. So you know, That's while crazy. he was here, it was a blessing to have him on the Clip Notes podcast, and then to have him rock at my check as well. So yeah, man, he's a good dude. Good dude. Good dude. Through really, through. really good dude. If y'all haven't checked out the Senior Chaos episode of, of Cliff Notes, you definitely should because it's it's a it's a good one. Oh yeah. Uh for all of my from all my runners out there, there's there's some tips on that one for you. So you should gotta you gotta go check that out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um you you mentioned it be on the on the intro and that that's one of the things I want to get into because listening to your music, oftentimes I'd hear you talk about like you shout out the you shout out the IE and I'd be like, Okay, that's what's up. Bro, what's the IE? I had no, I had no idea, bro. So break that down right oh, quick. Oh man, that's funny you say that, man. Nobody really knows about the IE unless you're from Southern California, or anywhere near LA. But it's 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 just like being out here. Like if you live in Hillsboro mm. and you go back to LA, mm. I'm not gonna tell people I live in Portland. Right. Or sorry, I'm gonna say I right. live in Portland. I'm right. not gonna say I live in Hillsboro, right? Nobody knows who that is. Yeah. Um, Disclaimer, I do live in Portland. Just, just so everybody knows that. That's but, straight. No front. <laughs> yeah, but uh but no, yeah, the IE is like a little about an hour from LA. Okay. Um, and it's kinda always been looked at as like I even say it in some songs, like it's always kind of been looked at as like the little brother of LA. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, but there's a lot of talent. Even though LA is like the hub, there's a lot of talent that is coming out of the IE for sure. Like yeah. and that's like all fronts from from music to to art to to all sorts of things, man. But um I mean, there's been some pretty successful artists that have come out of the IE too. Mm-hmm. Um, Audio Push is crushing it right now. Work. Yep, they just came out with Cloud Nine Hundred Nine a little while ago. Mm-hmm. I think they got some other stuff. I haven't, I haven't checked in a minute, but 
Yeah, they they're doing a thing. Hit boys from there. He's okay. from my hometown, uh, Fontana, which okay. is crazy. Okay. Um, but even like Travis Barker, mm-hmm. like he's from there. Um, Alien Ant Farm, like rock bands, like there's there's just been some successful people in the music industry from there. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely it's a it's a hidden secret for sure. And sometimes that's a good thing. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. it's good to sort of to sort of keep things on the low and and just let you create and cultivate the scene before you know, before you share it with the masses like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so from, from Inland Empire, uh, currently a Portland resident, um, I met you through, through, uh, you know, the local, the, the local hip hop connect. Yeah. Um, but, uh, this is not where you started making music. Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. It started, um, in 2000 and 2008, technically, okay. um, where I feel like I really decided I was going to go all in and like really start from a production standpoint to write into everything. Um, but I've always, even in high school, man, we used to just spit freestyles at lunch, you know, what just you mess do? around. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> yeah. we would go to lunch and I had some friends that were like some of the best table, you know, pen, pens and coins just making beats mm-hmm. and they were incredible. Uh, and I used to just come with written all the time yeah. just because everybody knew like what's jury gonna bring today what's right. jury gonna bring today so i'd always come so i'd always rap um but it wasn't until i had a cousin actually who was like super talented he like learned everything by ear but he's a multi-instrumentalist uh he's a singer he basically played every instrument at his church so i knew i knew he made music yeah. but it wasn't until i actually saw him create beats yeah where i got hooked and he was actually at my at the time, he was living with my grandmother, and he just had, like, this little corner room. It looked like the, the Harry Potter closet where it was, like, hella small, and you, like, tucked away in a corner. But he had a, a computer set up there, and he was just making beats on FL Studio yeah. uh, or Fruity Loops at the time yeah. with just, you know, the computer keyboard. And he was just cranking out bangers. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. You doing all that with your computer keyboard? Right. Like, Because right. I didn't know. I, yeah. was, I was, like, 16 or whatever. Um, and I just didn't have any exposure because no one in my immediate family does music, mm-hmm. you know, my I come from more of a, a sport driven background. So uh but once I once I really saw the creation process of that, I, I was hooked. Yeah. And he let me jump on a little bit and then immediately I was like, yo, I went home and was like, Pops, I need a keyboard, man. I need to get this grow <laughs> we gotta get it cracking. Right, right, right. So I, I'd say two thousand and eight was that's when I bought my first keyboard and my first mic and uh it never looked back. No doubt. Yeah. So I think for for a lot of us it starts off with MCing unless we have um, an introduction to music, whether it be through church or through school, mm-hmm. um, in terms of you know doing things instrumentally, the majority of us, I would say, you know, it started, it started with emceeing, but so much of what you do, I see, is production. So did they, was that sort of the thing that you really jumped into at that point then, once you got the keyboard? Uh, it's one of those things that uh, I feel like no matter what I've ever done, I just wanted to be good at it. Mm-hmm. Like or great at it rather. Like I don't I don't like to half ass things, you know. Yeah. So I've always that's just been me in every sport that I've played, you know, every job I've had. That's just that's just my, my nature. Like if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Um, so that's how that's how I looked at music and I felt like I was already a good rapper. I could write mm-hmm. and the production thing, once I got a knack for it, I was like I mean it's it it's not it's it seems easy. When you get on there, and a lot of people can make FL Studio beats, you know that you can do that all day. Right. But when you really get down to actually composing and actually producing and actually, you know, leading all angles of a creative, the creative process of making an album, it's it's different. Yeah. Um. And I just really wanted to to be able to hang my hat on saying I can do that well. Right. You know right. what I mean. So, um, I think that's really what it came down to was just me being hungry to just be good at it. Yeah. Um. So the pr- production became an element that. I think eventually balanced out with with my my rhyme skill, um, and I just like I said, it hasn't been it hasn't been the same since I started. <laughs> so, so I will never label myself one or the other. It's, yeah. you know, I'm definitely both. Just in, more more of just an artist. I'm more of an yeah yeah definitely. So, um, so again, you and I made the connect. Um, I think you sent me one or two joints before the album dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, okay, this is this is dope. I can definitely uh, vibe with a couple things: production quality, um, just overall recording quality, content, which is huge for me, bro. Big um, for me too. 
And for sure. Where does yeah. where does that come from for you? Because I think in you know in a time was Bloom Bloom is your first project. Bloom is not my first project. Okay. Bloom, Bloom is my first project that I've ever like actually pushed and got on like Spotify and Apple Music and all that. Okay. But I've got some other projects that I just Okay, worse. See, yeah. I, I wasn't I wasn't aware of that, yeah, sir. Yeah. So so what's what's what else can we go check for then? Um I had a my first project was actually called Rhymes and Textbooks. Um I I put it out like 2012, like my senior year of college, and that was that was I mean that's 4 years after I kind of started producing. So I was making stuff and putting out random singles and things there. Uh YouTube was a, a platform that um, me and some old roommates used to leverage a lot back in the day. Okay. And we were like racking up like dumb views, like yeah. crazy. But we we're doing a bunch of like acoustic duo type stuff. So like one guy would sing um, and play guitar. Another guy was playing the ukulele and I was rapping. Yeah, yeah. Like just some friends from Hawaii that we went to college together. So yeah. we used to just make, make songs and record and put stuff, content out on YouTube. But eventually I put that Rhymes and Textbook out. It was on Dat Piff and like SoundCloud and stuff. Word. Um, but Bloom was the first project where I actually um, felt that I actually had a grasp on the actual mix and mastering process. When right. I put out rhymes and textbooks, I was still re really green mm -hmm. um, in terms of producing to that level. So I would say that Bloom is is my official first like true project. Like I, if someone wants to be like, "Yo, what? Where's your catalog? What should I go listen to?" I'm not gonna say rhymes and textbooks. <laughs> I'm gonna say go listen to Bloom because that's like the stuff I'm actually like. That's where I'm at today. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for sure, that's that's what it is. Okay. All right. And then the title Bloom. Yeah. What's up? What's up? With yeah. The so um. Well, hold on. Before we even go there, I, I realized I didn't ask another question about the um the content part. Yeah. I really want to talk about that for a second because because yeah, yeah. that's critical to me too. That's huge. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of um, like my pops was big into funk and soul. Um, a lot of like Stevie, a lot of Luther, a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Like, I mean, everybody listens to those, but truly, that's what was just constantly in my house. Right. I wake up Sunday morning if Gap Band is playing loud at seven, eight a.m. Right. That means we got dishes and <laughs> vacuuming to do. We about to be cleaning the house for a minute. Like, that's that's what it was. So that's just what I grew up on. Yeah. Um, but from a from a hip hop standpoint, I really really connected with like artists like. Uh, Outkast was like one of my favorite groups of all time. Um, a lot of Tribe, I listened to a lot of Tribe. Yeah. Um, and then I started to gradually get into Common and Talib See, bro, and all those guys, right? You, bro. That's but that, exactly why but I that's, mess with you. That, that's like, and I and I love everything that's on the radio too. Like you can't knock the guys that were making mainstream like hits. Like mm -hmm. I've always loved that stuff too. But the stuff that I always found myself going back to were those guys. And then, you know, eventually College Dropout comes out and it just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Kanye took that whole thing to a whole nother level. And he had Common and Talib on that same album. Like, guys I, I rocked with. So, um, you know, the 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 content that those guys spit, I think really influenced a lot of what I do. Right. But I try to take, I try to take that boom bap and and kind of mix it a little bit into a little bit what's going on today. Mm -hmm. Because I just feel like we live in a day to day where, you know, like content and boom bap kind of taking a back seat. You know, it's, mm -hmm. and, and, and I feel like there are a few artists, very few artists who do it very well mm -hmm. uh, in terms of merging mm -hmm. the idea of content with maybe some trap drums or just a little bit more of a, a new school vibe. Um, so I, I like to see, I like to say that I, I, I have that ability to do that. Yeah. Um, which which you'll you'll hear in the next project for sure. There's there's definitely some some of that, but okay. But yeah, man, that, that's huge for me. So. So that. Um that being your first you, you, you mean you mentioned that being your first project that you produced in the stat and the third but yep. um and then doing stuff with with the homies in college but performance wise um prior to bloom what was your performance situation yeah so i i performed i would say man it's been like for, i've been performing for a long time okay long time um the reason I ask, bro, yeah, is because, like I said, fan of the music, fan of you as a person. Like as the more we, the more we For would sure. build, yeah. Likewise, then, thank, I appreciate <laughs> that, B. And then uh, got you on mic check. You know, I was expecting you to do your thing, and then, bro, you blew me away, like, like. <laughs> so, I, so that showed me right there that yeah. like you ain't new to this. No, definitely not new to it. Um, I, I've been performing for I would at least. God, at least eight years. Yeah, yeah. At least. 
Um, and, and it really started like very quickly after 2008 when I really started to, to own the fact that I really want to make music and put content out there. Right. Um, I went to college, came here. Um, and I'll just give you the backstory on that real quick because mm-hmm. I feel like that'll help set it up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I moved from, from Cali to here at the age of 18. I was looking to hoop. Okay. I wanted to play ball where I, wherever I was going. Yeah. Um, but I for sure wanted to be here at, at, in Oregon specifically, and that was more uh, career related. Okay, this wasn't music related at all. It was it was definitely career. I knew what I wanted to do, uh, so I was like, I'm going to Oregon. I'm going to go do that. Yeah, and and thank God that's what I'm that's what I'm doing now. That's my right. day job. So that's that was the reason I came here in the first place. But I just so happened to have uh, go to a school which I didn't know when I was going there, but I learned a lot of people from Hawaii go there, Pacific University. Uh, and they have a great physical therapy program. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. Um, and that was in Forest Grove, which Forest Grove was a huge culture shock for me because I had never been in a place like that before, especially coming from where I was from. Yeah. Um, so it was really hard for me to adjust. Um, but I stuck through it, and I think the main thing that helped with that was music. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was also, I was a music minor. I was a marketing major, but a music minor. Okay. Um, but I also met a lot of people from Hawaii that, that play music. on like just, That's what they do every single day. In between classes, they're meeting in groups and bringing instruments out to the lawn or to people's dorm rooms, and they're jamming. Yeah. And I wasn't—I didn't have a a, a jamming mentality, or mm-hmm. or I didn't—I've never been in that experience before. So I loved that. I thought yeah. that was dope, man. Yeah. I was like, yo, man, people are just like singing random covers and freestyling and all kind of stuff. But like nobody rapped. No one had that hip hop element. So that's where I came into play. Gotcha. So I got invited to some of these jam sessions and started. Just kicking freestyles on top of random instrumentals that we were just all just playing live, yeah. um, and I just really fell in love with with just that experience. From there, um, I ended up getting a few roommates. We all got a crib off campus, and uh, all uh, all of my roommates happened to play music. Okay, so we all we would just write songs together, um, and at that time, I had you know I had all my production equipment in my dorm room, so mm-hmm. you know they all come to or in my room now we got a bedroom um but we would all just record stuff and, and that's where the youtube stuff started to pick up yeah uh but we just started playing a lot and then eventually we started doing shows we do shows on on campus so we right. would do shows you know around the around the town come to portland do a couple shows yeah. um and that was through college my sophomore year though uh at the end of sophomore year we got hit up by a record label out in detroit and they wanted to have us go out there for a whole summer they're like, we, we got you covered. Just come yeah, out yeah, here, yeah. come record music, come play. And they just like connected with y'all through through seeing your, your stuff like on YouTube or whatever. Basically, yeah, yeah. Basically, one of the guys that was a singer in our group, they tapped his shoulder, and then he told them about me and sent them my stuff. And they're like, bring him too. Okay. So I was like, all right, bet. Let's yeah. go. Let's go to. I ain't never been to Detroit before. Let's yeah. go. So we uh we go out to Detroit, and we literally all summer just play. We just play music every day. We wake up. We were either rehearsing yeah. or performing. Yeah. And we did it all summer, and that was how we made money. It was literally like that's all we did. Come back here for for my junior year, um, and we just continued to do little local things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then fast forward to after graduating, um, I started uh, my first job at Yahoo. Okay. So I was working at Yahoo. There was a Yahoo office in Hillsborough. I think it's still there. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, when I was working there, that was when I was we were gigging the most. We probably we 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 branched out. Added a drummer, added a bass player. Uh, we had a sax player, we had a trombone player, we had a lead guitarist, then our uke player and the guitar player that were already in the band. So yeah. we had like a seven, eight piece band. Who was the name of the band? Uh, the band was called Dope Kind back back then. Okay. Uh, and and Kind K I N E is yeah. just how people from Hawaii say K I N D Kind. So right. like, oh, bro, you know the Kind, you know the Kind. So, right, right. Uh, Shout so out to people, wifey. yeah, yeah. Gotta, hey, gotta, gotta hey, put hey. Out there. shoots, <laughs> shoots. Um, but yeah, they. Um, we you know we we didn't really know what the heck to call ourselves. We were like, oh, what kind of music you play? I oh, would play the dope kind. <laughs> yeah. Word Cause up! Because we, no, we literally we literally played like it was like a um, we got compared to the Roots a lot. Okay. And, and not the toot horns, but it was more like because it was unique. It was it was a mix of hip hop and funk and reggae and like soul. Like there was all kind of elements in there. So I think we just kind of a lot of people gravitated to the music. Yeah. So we would perform. We were performing at hip hop shows. Mm-hmm. We were performing at random bars. We were performing at big events for like company parties. We were performing at for old 
white people that don't know anything about hip hop right. we're performing for old black people who know nothing about reggae or you know whatever else so right, we, right. we literally had like this wide range of music that we could play because of all of the elements in the band like yeah. no one was trapped our bass player was um super super funky older guy we called him pops shout out sean he was like he's a beast like mm -hmm. so slaps bass like crazy we had a um the uke player is like a god on the uke never seen anybody play the uke like that before um guitar player is an amazing rhythm guitarist and singer yeah. um and he's a good songwriter too so we just we would both make write all the songs and then just the band we just show it to the band be like yo let's play this and everybody's yeah. like all right cool let's go yeah so we we did a bunch of shows like around oregon detroit we've been in cali we, we you know moved around a little bit mm -hmm. uh, we were gigging like two three times a week at that time wow. so we were going it was like and it was never on some like this is what we're going to do it was just like we just love to play music right you know what i mean like it was never it was never um a monetary thing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. everybody just had a passion for music and that was it so answer your question long story <laughs> short nah that's what we I do perform, that's what we do perform, I perform quite a bit yeah um highlight uh of performing with that band we actually when I worked at Yahoo uh -huh. we had a um Yahoo put on a battle of the bands and it was like a global battle of the bands it worked yeah yeah so there was like 300 groups that like submitted videos everybody had to submit a, a video to enter right and I mean there's Yahoo in Europe and hey, like everywhere right so you get videos in different languages, different genres. It was like amazing the type of like content that was coming in to be entered. Right. So I was like, yo, we only need one person that works in the in the company to submit. So we had a video. I just submitted it. Week later, we get chosen top five, right? What? So the top five bands get flown to, to the headquarters, which is in uh near San Francisco, a city mm -hmm. called Sunnyvale. Mm -hmm. Um and we would perform on, on a Friday at the end of work where all employees can come watch. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had literally battled the other bands. Like, everybody got up and did a song. Mm -hmm. We went last because we had the biggest band. Right. But, man, we brought the house down, bro. Like, we, <laughs> it was like, I was. it was one of those things, like, when I used to hoop, uh -huh. I used to always, and I'm sure every hooper can, can remember this feeling. When you're doing layup lines before the game starts and you're looking over and you're like, Oh, these guys are whack, bro. I got, we got that. We about to destroy these cats, yo. That's exactly the feeling I had when we were up there and we were just waiting for our turn. Like, yeah. watching the other groups, I was like, man, it's over. It's <laughs> over. Let's get this, yo. So we uh, we went up and did like a, um, one thing we were really good at is just like understanding the audience we were with. So we went on a whim. Like, we had a few songs we were going to do based on the audience. Right. Um, and we ended up choosing a rendition of Fly Like an Eagle. Oh, word. Yeah, yeah. And... It's like a funky hip hop version of it. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, the chorus starts and everybody knows the words to it. So people are just like, oh, what is this? But mm -hmm. then you hear the bass and it's funky and the mm -hmm. drums are kicking. It was just mm -hmm. like, you know, it was way more upbeat than everything else they heard. Um, so yeah, we we just tore the house down. Um, the way they chose was it was a voting system. So you got like a week or something. Mm -hmm. So we submit, um, people are submitting votes for a week mm -hmm. based on footage of the video. So. If you were not there, mm -hmm. you could go watch them online. Gotcha. So people were submitting votes for whatever whatever band they wanted to win. Mm -hmm. We ended up winning it, right? So we win the Battle of the Bands. Uh, we had seven people. Yeah, we had seven people that they that Yahoo paid for uh -huh. to go down to to do that performance. Yeah. And I was the only person that worked for the company, right? Seven of us go down. We win the battle. The winners get to go back for the holiday party uh -huh. and the way that they used to do holiday parties was like they would throw millions of dollars at this thing and make it like a vegas casino like, it was crazy it was like ten thousand people at this party yeah. so we performed uh in front of a, a pretty massive crowd the stage was the best stage i've ever performed on yeah. like it was unreal man i had never been like one thing for musicians like and everybody who has dealt with this can like you know dealing with sound men is the hardest thing not when you just rap that's one thing mm -hmm. Right. Or if you're just a vocalist, that's one thing. But when you got to balance all of the instruments. Yeah, man. I mean, we had a when we went down there, we had an eight piece band. It was the most perfect, crisp sound I ever experienced, wow. man. Like it was I was like, damn, bro, this. Is, so this is what <laughs> this is what they do. man. It right. was amazing. So right, right. we go up and we uh, we actually end up opening for Counting Crows. Wow. So Counting Crows was the headliner. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, and we, and we rocked that show, and it was it was dope because I know what Counting Crows sounds like. I mean, I don't I don't know their music, their whole catalog, but I know what they sound like. Right. And this is supposed to be a holiday party. It was open bar. People are getting trashed. Mm-hmm. Like people want to go hard and yeah. have a good time and yeah. dance. Counting Crows isn't really party music, mm-hmm. so I was really surprised that they did that because. You know what we bring in. We bring it party music. Right. So we came out and we hit them with like a 30 minute set of just like up tempo. Like the crowd was just, it, it was incredible. It was like the, the, the biggest music high I've ever been on in my life. And we got off that stage and I just remember like at least 40 people coming up and be like, why didn't Counting Crows open for y'all? <laughs> and I was like, hey, I don't know, man. Right. We did our thing. It was, right. it was fun. I right. had a good time. So that's what's um, up. Bro. But, but, yeah, I, we've been doing it for a minute, man. It's, it's it's just one of my favorite things to do. That I I was talking to someone recently about um perform like their your know, planning performances and this that and the third and um they were talking about performing with the band and I was saying man there's something there's something special about hip hop with a live band for sure um it just it brings it it brings a an amazing element I think of freedom for the for the MCs mm-hmm. um. And just that live sound, you can't beat that. Yeah, definitely, it's tough beat to that. beat for sure. Yeah, but I will tell you one thing that's tough to beat also is um, being able to to go up and perform to your own beats mm. and script those beats to how you want them. Like yeah. I change my arrangements for live shows, and I don't know if you noticed, but they're never the same as 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 the, as the actual record. regular album because yeah. like I'll I'll make the intro longer or whatever so I can interact with the crowd more, right. or I'll like. I'll, uh, and I'll work with my DJ too. Um, my DJ is really good at like, we, we'll set up, you know, set up some cues and whatnot to mm-hmm. to bring stuff in and where we know the energy is gonna be, right. um, or 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 where we feel like the crowd is gonna really gravitate towards. Shout out DJ Show, that's my guy. What up, Show? Um, but uh, yeah, that was um, that was one thing that when I finally started performing to my own beats, yeah, which I had spent so much time you know, gigging with a band. Right. I just forgot what the simplicity of just performing to a dope beat was like. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. I was so used to just live instruments. Mm-hmm. So I think for me the, the, the perfect the perfect blend of the two yeah. is is where I feel like is is the best sound. No doubt. Because you got you get the, the, the deep undertones of whatever bass or whatever beat you're rocking, but then the live the live elements and the frequencies that, that brings is is different. But when they come together, yeah. It's crazy. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Chopping on my guy Jay Jury. So, um, the having that experience of rocking with a band is that something that's sort of in your, you know, in in your plans for for doing again? Absolutely. Okay. All Absolutely. Right. I'm just checking because oh, you yeah. know what I mean. Absolutely. Like you said, man, it, it's hard to beat. Um, yeah. It's hard to beat. I think I think a lot of people too um, don't necessarily know how mm-hmm. to do that, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like the more the more I'm around um, and able to show how easy it is and how you know how how much better it can be. Yeah, I, I just hope that it kind of helps influence other people to try new things and you know whatnot. But there's without a doubt, That's you you will up. be seeing some some live instrumentation in, in future shows for sure. Definitely like hearing that. Yeah. Um, the the album was it definitely got a lot of run. I know on my show. Um, Appreciate How was that. it received? Of course, bro. Of course. Like I always tell people, man, you make good music, you make good content. I got you for real, my man. Um, how was it received? Um, you know, based on what you saw, how was it received? I feel like it was received pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I got a lot of great feedback from my my favorite is obviously my. I want the people that I whose opinions I value the most. Mm-hmm. I really want them to rock with it, yeah. and, and honestly, if, as long as they rock with it, I'm happy. Um, but obviously, getting new fans is always amazing too. Like no. hearing, 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 having random people reach out to you um, and, and talk about the project or yeah. talk about certain songs that resonated with them or certain beats that they were just like, "Yo, this was crazy!" Like, it feels good. It, yeah. it definitely feels good, and obviously, that's why I would do it to to try to connect with 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 more people. Uh, and, and share my my story and my experiences, and hopefully someone relates to it. Right. And and I think I just never realized how many people, um, you know, related to the things that I was saying. Mm-hmm. Like I, a lot of people were, were hitting me on a few songs that were just like, "Man, I felt that was exactly my life." Yeah, you feel like you were talking about me, which is which is dope. Yeah, which is dope. So, um, 
shout out to everybody who's listened to Bloom, man. That's definitely a, a special project for me. Yeah. Um, Bloom essentially was a the whole idea for it, and the reason I called it Bloom was as you look through the track list, which was carefully plotted, mm-hmm. is the reason why IE is the first song on there. That's where I'm from. Right. But I wanted to tell this journey of what I've gone through mm-hmm. since I left home, right? Yeah. And the man that I've bloomed into. That's so that's what it was all about was every track in order is kind of life events that have happened um, where PDX is kind of middle end mm-hmm. because that's where I'm at now. Right. And, and right, you know, shortly after that, I'm talking about my wife and one of the songs. Was, mm-hmm. And then uh, the last song is thanking my parents for allowing me to bloom into who I've been. So it's definitely um, a, a, a very special project that's close to me. So you run it, you running it down, bro. And that's I wanted to get into that a little bit because um some of my favorite some of my favorite joints on the project. I gotta pull up the playlist. So Notepad Thoughts Part Two. Yeah. Is um is dope. And I think there's there's when we, again we talk about content, we talk about um, you know, things that are that are that are personal um to you, things that you know that you can relate to. There was definitely some of that. For me on that on that track for sure i love that song um, that's, that's one of my favorite in fact the only time i would ever promote rhymes and textbooks is so you can go listen to notepad thoughts part one but that's what's up that's where that came from okay yeah okay i mean so, the project's not it's it's cool yeah, yeah. but you know as a i think as an artist anytime i look at my old stuff i'm just like right. ah, of course you know I'm, it's just not the it ain't what it, where i'm at today yeah but that and shows just, growth but it shows growth yeah yeah, yeah. so a lot of people rocked with that one too, but No Pad Thoughts Part One um, was on that project and, and kind of set the tone for how I wanted No Pad Thoughts Part Two to gotcha. sound like. In fact, when I told a couple of my close friends that I was doing a part two, right. they were like, ah, "I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you sure you want to do that?" Right, I was like, right. "Bro, trust me. Yeah, yeah. This one's gonna be better." That's what, so now you you you're 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 creating a you, you may be creating a theme for every project. It might be. Yeah, you know I mean, oh, uh, PDX be. definitely one of my favorite joints. I think it was cool that you did have songs dedicated to, um, to your to your family, to your parents, and then, and then also to your wife. I think that um, it it creates a very personal project. Um, you're inviting people in. Um, you're creating vulnerability to a certain degree too, in, mm-hmm. in doing that. But like you said, you, that was that was a purposeful. That was very very thoughtful. very purposeful. Yeah, um, I think I think the one the one takeaway I wanted people to have when they listened to that project was just having the feeling of like relatableness mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. um i feel like everybody can relate to having even if your parents aren't here mm-hmm. having some form of a guardian or someone in your life who has made an impact and they are the reason you're here today right. they are the reason why you're doing what you're doing you know they're the reason you think or do the things that you do yeah i feel like everybody is at some point experienced mm-hmm. love and i feel like in hip hop especially there's not a lot of people that talk about that right in, in the way that it should be talked about right you know it's kind of it's kind of a one lane mm-hmm. thing you know what i mean um but i have no shame i mean my wife's the she's the reason why the project even happened like like i, why I you was, blush it I, <laughs> <laughs> shout out wifey she's she's right here um but um but truthfully like i work in a in a day job that's extremely busy and, and time consuming mm-hmm. and i'm really passionate about that as well mm-hmm. Um, but obviously music's like my number one passion and it sucks when that has to take a back seat so frequently. Right. And I found myself, even before I started working on Bloom, I was just like I would just kinda complain, not really realizing I was complaining, but I would say things like, Man, I wish I had time to do this. Mm-hmm. Man, I had this idea, but I don't have time to do this. Mm-hmm. And eventually she was just like, Well, you have you can make time. Mm-hmm. You have to make time if you really want it to happen. And right. I was like, It's a simple thought, but in reality, it's not that easy to do. Right. So um, she sat down with me and we just like, she's like super organized, like like OCD, like crazy. <laughs> but like helping me script days that I could actually get the project work done and mm-hmm. actually, you know, sit and, and devote time to being in the studio. Yeah. Um, like, and then also not just sitting and creating the time, but then being okay with me just being trapped in there for five to 10 hours of, you know, whatever right. on certain days. It could be a, an event that pops up mm-hmm. and she would just go do it on her own because we allotted Tuesday night or whatever night right. for music days. And so if it wasn't for her, that that project would have never happened. I would have never made the time to do it. Yeah. Um, but I do think that because hip hop is in a state where 
you know, artists don't really talk about the their loved ones. And not even, I feel like a lot of people talk about their folks. Mm-hmm. I will say that. A lot of people talk about their folks. But no one really talks about their significant other mm-hmm. in, in the way that I feel the majority of the world mm-hmm. could probably relate to. Right. You know what I mean? So right. that's why I was like, well, I'll, I'll do it gladly because <laughs> I'm saying, happy. Yeah. I'm, you know, I, I got no, uh, n- no reason not to. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think that's cool because it gives you an opportunity to um, potentially change, change the narrative. It's something that OG, OG one and I talk about a lot, man, that when you have a platform, you have an opportunity to um, create positive images, create a different, a different way of, of thinking and 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 um, I mean we can change the world even through even through that change our communities even through that yeah um, you also you also consistently keep family around you man which I think is which I think is dope man and I would imagine that that does a lot for you um, in terms of beyond even what you just described in terms yeah. of just keeping you on point yeah for sure it's a it's a constant reminder because I, I tell I, I tell my lady this all the time like I feel like I don't talk to my folks enough, mm-hmm. you know, because they're not here. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're still down in um, near San Diego, mm-hmm. a city called Oceanside. They just got like their dream house there. They live in large, man. They love they love it. My Word. mom's like sending me pictures of the beach like every single day through yeah. text. Um, but I just get so caught up in the day to day that I, you know, I feel like I let too much time sometimes go by without you know just just touching base. Yeah. Um, and since my brother's been up here. He, I mean, he talks to them all the time, mm-hmm. and there are days where he talks to them, and I don't even have time to talk to them because yeah. I'm running, I'm doing whatever. Yeah. So it's a, you know, the reason I wrote "You're the Reason," uh, one I actually gave them that the, the album came out January of 2018, mm-hmm. about a year ago, mm-hmm. but I gave them "You're the Reason" May of 2017. Wow. So I wrote that. I did that song well, man. I knew that that song was going to end the album. It was going to be the last song. Right. I had that song done well before that, and I gave that to him as a gift for my mom's birthday. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, it's their favorite song on the album. Right, right. <laughs> right. Written for them, about <laughs> but, them, yeah. You know, but the reason I wrote that was, I, every time I hear it, it's a constant reminder, like, when you've got people who have really helped put you in the position you were in, right. you got to pay it forward. And okay. there's nothing like a simple phone call. That, it goes a long way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, family, family is super important to me. That's what's up. Big facts. And, and I think for me, I've always been the kind of person who has extended family. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I, people that I've created relationships with that have become so close, they are family. And I, I also think it's a black people thing. Oh, my cousin. So, so right. my right. auntie, auntie. So, yep. so, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's just, that's just what it is. But, yeah. but it's true. There are people that impact your life just as much as a parent could. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, my family, I, I try to keep you know, keep close and, and make sure that, you know, they know how I feel about them. That's what's up. It's funny, man, I, when I was looking back and I realized that you dropped Bloom in, in 2018 and like you said, it was January of 2018, but it seems like, it seems like it's been out for a minute. It and does. I think that, it does feel that way. You know, projects that have, that have depth and substance to them. This is just, this is just sort of the way that I look at it. Like it's, it's like eating fast food and then sitting down and eating a good meal. That good meal yeah. sits with you. Mm-hmm. you know, fast food, you're hungry again in five minutes. Yep. And to me, that's important because we live in a time right now, musically, where there that's what happens. You get hit over the head with so much music. It's here and it's gone and you forget about it. But I don't feel like Bloom is like that. I feel like there. I feel like you can go back to Bloom and you and you get an opportunity to hear something a little bit different. Yeah. Um, that's love. It just sits with you for that's real. That's love. For Thank real. you, man. But then at the end of 2018, mm-hmm. um, you hit us with you hit us with a with a joint, like a joint, bruh. With we good. Oh yeah, yeah, bruh. yeah. I was like, man, which one are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, we good. I, is... I really dig that, yo. Dope, dope. Yeah, that's a that's a little teaser for what's to come, you know? Okay. Because that one has a little, a little less boom bap yep. and a little more, you know. There's I wouldn't call it trap. It's mm-hmm. it's not trap, but mm-hmm. it's. There's a lot more bass tones that are just different from what I've used before. Um, I wanted Bloom to have a certain sound. Right. You know, but this next project is also going to have a certain sound. So there's a reason for everything. No doubt. Um, But We Good is definitely, like, uh, I think, an amazing blend of, like, trying to bring my flavor to to what a lot of people are really attracted to today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's it's a reason why I I love guys like J Cole like mm-hmm. Cole for example does that inc- incredibly well right you know what I mean um 
but but yeah, that's 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 for us to come for sure. We good as we good as a teaser. The, um, the thing, that, one of the things I love about we good though is that you know, I mean, this is just this is just my assessment. Again, getting to know you as a person, like super chill, um, pretty non-assuming mm-hmm. in terms of my my interactions with you, humble dude. Like, and you listen to we good, and it's like, okay, all right, like. Jay said something like, "All right, now he, he just, you MC and I'm rapping now. Oh, yeah. Like, come with it. Yeah, yeah. Which is which is fun because you don't do it in a you don't do it in a way like in a negative way, but like, nah, this is this is MCing, which is it's sometimes it's fun to see to see artists to see MCs go go into that go into that space. Yeah, it's a good space and it's also amazing. I've only performed it once, um, which was at uh, Boston Up." Um, Boston Nova shout, yeah, yep, at Boston yeah. Nova. Shout out to Trista. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and people were were live. Yeah. on that track. I, yeah. I think it's I think it's a crowd favorite right now for sure. Um, but uh, I definitely tried to channel that energy to to really be a little more aggressive with the raps. Mm-hmm. The chorus is is catchy, but right. it's also like you know it's it's uh it just has a, a mood it puts you mm-hmm. in. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it was that's exactly how I wanted it to feel too. Yeah, like, you need those bangers. Um. But rest assured, the 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 project to to follow that, um, you're gonna get a lot of that, man. That's what's up. Yeah, that's yeah, what's I'm up. I'm hyped. I'm excited. I can't I can't allude too much on that because it's very work in progress. Right. We we're talking offline a little bit about that, but yeah. it, it's it's gonna be a vibe for sure. No doubt. Yeah. You have, you know, we talked about my assessment of how open and personal bloom is and inviting people into that space but you literally invite people into your creative space like you know letting people see you in the lab working on things even um you've even done some some breakdown or educating hey this is how you build this Mm -hmm. that and the third which i think is really really cool yeah two things i think one it's cool especially for for younger artists younger musicians young people um who who maybe are interested in i remember the very first time that um, I've always been fascinated with 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 the DJ with with yeah. scratching. Yeah. And I remember the first time that I had an opportunity to see uh, a homie who had turntable scratch it's, and mix. Yeah. You know it it yeah. it's, it it opens your mind. For so sure. for you to share that with young people, I think is dope. Yeah. The other thing though that you do though is is that you open yourself up to opinions. Like, I'm working on this. What do you think? So first up, kudos to you, bruh, for doing that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because especially in hip hop, but I yep. think when it comes to art, when it comes to being a human being, there's a certain amount of ego that mm-hmm. we all have. You have to especially put, put, in hip hop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you put that aside, and and you know. Yeah, that that's the thing for me, is, and it's always been that way. I'm I've always been, um, like even on the basketball court, like I'm gonna come at your neck, right? But we still cool, right? You know what I mean? Um, music wise, like I I, I guess I mean. You kind of have to have some form of an ego mm-hmm. to really, you know, um, like we good, for example, as you were saying, like yeah. you, you can definitely sense something there. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I feel like my ego only really kicks in and the little amount of ego that I do have only <laughs> kicks in when um, I'm just kind of rubbed the wrong way by new music that mm-hmm. people just worship and think is amazing. And yeah. I just I'm just like, yo, this is trash. Yeah. Bro. Like, it's not that good. Yeah. It's not good at all. Right. Um, and and I, and I feel like there are so many talented artists here in Portland. Mm-hmm. I've met so many talented artists, and the stuff that that gets actual play. Mm-hmm. Half of those guys don't have talent; they just have the relationships and the connections, uh, and, and a banging trap beat mm-hmm. or whatever beat. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really happy to see producers get more credit nowadays. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's love. Beat happening. Yeah. Or the platform that they're giving to producers, but yeah. yes, I think that that's my that's why I can't be too upset because a lot of those guys are they're coming out with maybe not the most talented raps, mm-hmm. but they got a really talented producer, and the producer tag is at the beginning of the beat. Everybody know who made the beat right. now, so that I think that's dope. Um, but from an MCN standpoint, like as I said earlier, content it's just it's taking a back seat. Yeah. There's not no one's really saying anything. Yeah the way they used to or the way I I feel like the artists I resonate with the most. Right, right. And I'm sure you resonate with the most. Right. You know, they just they aren't as relevant. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um but the ego the ego thing I've always kind of put to the side because I I look at this as more there's always opportunity to get better mm-hmm. and I'm always looking at the people around me to kind of pull elements or, or, or things that I might be learning from them. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Because I would never say I'm I'm the best at anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's always somebody better. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you do. There's always somebody that's better at you, Um, better than you at that. So there's no reason for me to to really have an ego, you know? And I kind of, I try I try my best to, to remain that way. Yeah. Um, but, you know, once in a while, <laughs> we good got to come out, man. Exactly. Um, the, uh, the, the work that you've done here in the city, um, people are, are obviously recognizing who you are as an artist and as an MC. Um, and then people may have the opportunity to, you know, then see you and then follow your your moves on social media, which I do. And I just want to say publicly, thank you so much for literally taking me around the world because I don't travel. But I feel like, you know, I've been to Asia now. I've been to- <laughs> <laughs> uh, you be on the road, You're welcome. You be on the road. I, I'm on the road a lot, yeah. So um, I, my, my, my wife can't stand it sometimes. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, I love traveling, man. Mm-hmm. We love traveling. Like, that's that's something that, there's always been a goal of ours to do. Yeah. Um, but I'm also fortunate to work in a situation where traveling is kind of meant, like just have to do it right. in order to get the work done. Right. Um, so I take advantage of that and, and make the most of those experiences. And, and I'm glad that I've made, you know, me sharing my experiences, <laughs> yes. you know, people, I feel like a lot of people have, have mentioned that same thing. And, yeah. and that's, I think that's cool to hear. I love no the doubt. people tap into it and, and vibe with it. Um, I took advantage of uh, my last trip to Asia and I actually set some time. I actually planned time. I learned how to plan time. Someone told me I do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, well, I planned time with some homies in Shanghai, uh-huh. and we shot a music video there. So we did a music video in Shanghai yeah. too. Uh, did you did you hear the little freestyle I put out? It's called. Uh, um, I'm blanking on my own song now, but I just I literally just put it out um, just before we good. It's called How I'm Feeling. Did you hear that song? Uh, How I'm feeling is only on SoundCloud. I didn't. I, so. I didn't put it anywhere. All right, I'm gonna sure. have to send that oh, yeah, directly yeah, to yeah, you because yeah, I think that. that one's gonna be way more your speed, just oh, in word. terms of like boom bap and bars. Okay, like that's just rap. Okay, it's literally a freestyle. Like, okay, not really a kind of, but not really. Yeah. And I just go in. Um, but for that song, I wrote that song. On I made the beat on the plane. There you go. To where was I going? I was I was going to Hong Kong first. I made the beat on the way to Hong Kong. Yeah, this was like a week week long trip. Yeah, made the beat on the way to Hong Kong. I wrote the song on the way to Beijing, and then I recorded the song in my Beijing hotel, like in between work. Like I was like staying up to like midnight trying to knock out a recording. I had to be up at like six or whatever. <laughs> but I was like, I gotta get this done before I get to Shanghai because right. we already got a video plan, and I let them take full creative um, over what the concept was gonna be. Okay. So I was like. As soon as I'm done with the song, I shot it over to them. I was like, yo, y'all got 24 hours to plan it out. Yeah. So I gave it to them. They start brainstorming. I get there. They laid the concept out for me. I'm just like, damn, this is about to be. <laughs> <laughs> this is way out of my comfort zone. But you know what? We're going to do it. So yeah. I won't post. I won't say too much on it. Okay. So when you see the video, you'll, I think you'll get a good kick out of it. I did put a little teaser teaser out. I'll make sure you, okay. you see yeah, it. But, link me with that. Yeah, yeah but, um, that but that one's it. been... Um, that one's on the burner. I've got a couple videos on the burner right now. I actually got a video for No Pet Thoughts Part Two. Oh, okay. That I did. Um, Word. Sitting on that right now. We're okay. just we're editing it, but I shot it at um, I shot it at Dead Stock Coffee. My boy. Oh, Ian. I saw the I saw you posting actually shooting the video. We were shooting the video. Okay. Yeah, at, okay. at, at Ian's spot. E Weezy. Shout out Weezy. <laughs> Dead Stock Coffee. Y'all go go holler at my man. Um, but yeah, I've, I've known him since we were like thirteen. Oh, word. Yeah. So so. I connected with him and was like, yo, actually, gosh, let me backtrack like way to the beginning <laughs> of this conversation. That that Yahoo um, San Francisco trip we did when we opened for Counting Crows, right, right. I let them know, uh, I mean, this was 2013. I told them after we flew seven people out for the battle mm-hmm. and they wanted to take a band back out there, I was like, yo, I, my lead guitarist wasn't there, so that's the eighth person I need to bring. Yeah. I also need to bring my photographer and videographer, <laughs> a.k.a. My two homies that I just right, want to come right, roll right, with right, us. Right, right. So my man Lemar, he was my roommate at uh-huh. the time. He went and just bought a camera, wow. random Nikon, right. just went and bought a camera. Right. And then E Weezy brought a video, a uh, video camera, yeah. and he was a videographer. And we literally up. just went and party the whole weekend. That's what's it was up. incredible. But yeah. we got some stories. But I'll never forget at that trip, Ian was actually telling us his idea about Deadstock. Oh, wow. He was working at Nike at the time and was ready for, for something new. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So he, he planted the seed, and it, it's amazing to see what, how far he's come and the things he's doing. Yeah. Um, so I'm super proud of that brother, and I, I connected with him uh, with the idea for No Bad Thoughts. I was like, yo, I want to shoot this at your, at your spot. He was yeah. like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, look out, be on the lookout for that, and that's, that's that'll be up, soon. Bro. And again, another another place in in the city that, um, you know, that, that, that we as a hip hop community have have a place that we can call home, and things that happen over there, I think, are really dope. Yeah, so, for sure, yeah. for sure. He's been putting on like a uh, little Sunday beat. Yep. Evenings and stuff yeah. like he's he's doing his thing. That's what's up. He's doing his thing. Um, so I put it out there, but just in case people aren't yet, as as you all should be, um, if people want to want to connect with you on social media, what's the where should they go? How should they go about doing that? Uh, artist name J X J U R Y J Jury. If you just type that in, it'll pop up. If you really want to know what the username is, it's J underscore J U R Y. They didn't have JX Jerry, so I had to do that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's Instagram. That's I'm pretty sure that's everything. But no one really uses Facebook and all that stuff no more. Instagram is all that really matters. And YouTube, you can literally uh, type in the same thing. You'll find me on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and most of my content, all posted on my website, jxjury.com. Super easy. Um, and yeah, that's that's it's it's really easy to find yeah. my stuff, man. It's not that hard to. You just Google JX Jerry, you'll you'll get some links. Yeah, man. Go to the website. Go to the website and everything is linked from the website. That's the easy the easiest way it's to do it. It's the easiest way to do it, man. Um we have uh things that are gonna happen this year. I was about to say something, but I'm gonna wait. I'm not gonna say it yet. <laughs> um so just definitely stay tuned, stay stay linked in. Um bruh, like I said, it's 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 a joy for me because doing Doing the podcast has become one of these things that I, I I really dig because it just gives me an opportunity to continue to fanboy out. You know, I'm truly a fan of of you of what you do. I'm, I'm a fan of your work. Thank you, man. Um, and like I said, as as long as you continue to, which I know you will, make music the way that you've been mu- making it and write the way that you that you've been writing, um, I want to definitely be there to to support it and and continue to champion it and try to to share it as much as possible because I think that it's art that um, deserves a platform. So thank you for, you know, for allowing me to to be a part of your movement. Bro. Salute, man. It. Thank you. Thank you for real, for real. Like Absolutely. since day one, man, I knew, I knew the, uh, the, the day that we met and I was like, this is definitely a relationship that's going to, that's going to maintain for sure. Um, and, and what you do for, for just Portland in general, because when I first moved out here, mm-hmm. even when I was with the band, it wasn't my understanding for the actual hip hop scene here in Portland. It wasn't that, wasn't that great. Yeah. Um, I had some friends like Champagne Dwayne was a homie and shout out to Champagne. Shout, shout out Champagne. He was uh he's like jumped in the middle of our band sets before and just spit some buzz. <laughs> you know, um we get we um God I've known Blossom since before she even started singing and she yeah. was like yo I'm gonna start singing. I was like yo bad let's do this. Mm-hmm. So she was on the album actually. Shout out Blossom. She was on the uh, the Right Now track, which is one of my, I feel like that song is so underrated. Like, everybody's like, everybody loves PDX. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves, surprisingly, IE, actually, which is super dope. I yeah. love that people love that song. Blow is my favorite just because the production of that was crazy. Right, right, right. Um, but Right Now, yeah. she killed that track. Like, it was, it was a vibe. Blossom is amazing. Yeah, yeah, she's, a, she's dope. So, um, I just feel like the, my understanding for the, the scene here wasn't that, wasn't that broad. Mm-hmm. But in the last year, I feel like I've connected with so many people, and, and a lot of it has to do with you. A lot of it has to do with Cool Nuts. Shout out Cool Nuts. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with OG One. Shout out OG One. Yeah. But there's just there's a just a, a a pot of curators here that are really making Portland hip hop matter. And and so on behalf of all artists, man, thank <laughs> thank you, thank y'all. I guess that's we without you guys, the game ain't what it is. No doubt, man. Definitely, definitely appreciate that, cat. Um, so once again, man, check out the website, uh, follow this cat, be on the lookout for some pretty amazing things that, that um, we can't talk about. But trust me, <laughs> when we do talk about them, you'll be very, very pleased. And uh, yeah, man. And, and like I said, man, just thank you for, for taking time out of your schedule. I know I know you're always you're always moving and it means a lot that you came through, bro. Oh, it means a lot to be invited, brother. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Dog. My guy. My man. Thank you. Jay Jerry uh, on the Cliff Nose podcast. Once again, man, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Remember that the Cliff Notes podcast is available everywhere you listen to your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. 
pretty much everywhere. Or you can go to www.cliffnotes.com. If you have comments or questions about the podcast, you can hit me up at cliffnotes at gmail.com. Once again, big ups to Acapella Apparel for their continued support of the Cliff Notes podcast. Um, you can check them out at A-K-E-P-E-L-E.com. That's acapella.com, uh, clothing for the music lifestyle. And uh, big ups to X-Ray FM for their continued support, being gracious hosts as we record the Cliff Notes podcast here in the X-Ray FM studio. And last but definitely, definitely not least, big ups to my guy, Theory Has It, for doing the official theme song for the Cliff Notes podcast. If you rock with us on Apple Podcasts, be sure to uh, give us a five-star rating and a comment that goes a long way in helping us do what we're trying to do. If you rock with Alexa, just ask Alexa to enable the Cliff Notes podcast. All right, y'all. Until we have an opportunity to do this again, God bless you. We out. Peace. Thank you.